In this video today, we are going to be talking about collectible key issues of comic books that you can add to your collection for under $50. Right here, right now, coming at you. Hello to all of my comic book back issue bargain hunters. Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Before we get into today's topic, I just wanted to again remind everyone to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Help us reach 10,000 subscribers. Once this channel reaches 10,000 subscribers, we will be giving away some free comic books. A video to what could possibly be given away is in the description. As soon as you're finished watching this video, go and check it out and consider joining the contest. Today's featured t-shirt design from our new overhauled merch store is Beware the Night Monkey. Who the heck needs Spider-Man when you have this sleek, dark looking Night Monkey? This geeky design and many others just like it are available at the merch store. Link is in the description. Check it out if you want to help support the channel. Oh, excuse me. Do you know where? Not the monkey! No way, I didn't! Oh, man. With that out of the way, let's get into our video. Comics that you can add to your collection for under $20. $20? No. $20 was last week. We're now moving on to the next best thing because I've run out of key issues of comics that you can add to your collection for $20. But that's okay. We're going to move on to the next best thing, which is key issues of comics that you can add to your collection for under $50. Hopefully for under 50 anyway. And that brings me to a little disclaimer. A couple viewers have reached out to me to let me know that some of the comics that are appearing in this list are listed online for sale for much, much higher than the stated prices that I am talking about in this video. I really apologize if that is happening. Unfortunately, none of us can control the comic book market and what people are posting prices for. But keep in mind, just because a particular book is listed for a price does not mean that it is actually selling at that price. All of the research done for this video is done by reading online blogs, consulting comic book guides, and various other sources out there. So if I'm telling you today that you can get a particular book for under $50, that is because most of my research sources are telling me that you can do so, but that does not necessarily mean that the prices uh, online will reflect what you see in this video. And that again brings me to our next point. Please do not use eBay to shop for comics. Uh, I think I should do a whole video on the whole topic of buying comics on eBay because if you've been buying comics for a long time, you probably will have noticed that eBay is no longer a great place to purchase comic books. At one time, you could get some really awesome deals on back issues on eBay. Nowadays, it just seems to me that everybody's out there trying to make a quick buck. 10 years ago, I was on eBay all the time trying to cherry pick all these different issues and, and, and lots of, of comics that I wanted to add to my collection. I was able to do so for actually very reasonable prices. That to me does not really seem to be the case. I started seeing a lot of really high prices on eBay and it just really turned me off. And every time I go to eBay to look for a particular back issue, it seems like it's always listed either double or triple what it's actually worth. Let me know in the comments if you've been having a similar experience on eBay or on buying comics online in general. If you want to add some of these comic books that you're going to be seeing in this list today to your collection, your best bet is likely to either consult a local comic book store, a flea market, or other thrift type shops. Now, unfortunately, if you don't live in a bigger city, it's probably going to be hard to come by some of those places. I live in a smaller city, so I don't have access to flea markets, don't have access to a lot of secondhand stores. My only option is either eBay or local comic book stores. Okay, I think I've preambled enough. So with that out of the way, let's get into our list with our first book, which is Darth Vader number three. And this is a relatively new book. This is the first appearance of Dr. Aphra. If you haven't read the uh, Darth Vader series, it's actually 
amazing. You have to pick it up. It, it only came out maybe about, I don't know, about four, maybe four or five years ago, but it is stellar. It is essential for any Star Wars fan, but if you're just a comic book fan uh, who's not necessarily huge into Star Wars, you still need to check it out. I have to say, uh, all of Disney's shortcomings in their new Star Wars films, I really feel they make up for it in some of their TV shows and in a lot of their comic books. This this Darth Vader stuff is just, ooh, it's stellar. And of course, today with most back issues that you see, I'm going to be suggesting a reader's pick. A few of you have reached out to me and told me that you really like that I provide reader's picks for a lot of these back issues. For those of us who don't necessarily want to dish out cash to buy collectibles and just want to read the story because again, as I've said before, the comic book hobby is a reading hobby. I myself am more of a comic book reader than a collector. Uh, I, I was more of a collector back in the day, but nowadays I'm pretty much just a reader. Uh, I, I just love the stories and I feel like I, I, I personally am enjoying the hobby a bit more. Reader's pick for Darth Vader, of course, is going to be Darth Vader Volume 1, the trade paperback. If you're looking to pick up this book today, there is a link in the description. Marvel Team Up number 65. This is the first appearance of Captain Britain in a United States publication. Uh, for those of you out there that are a little bit familiar with Captain Britain, and for those of you that are watching from the UK, you probably all will know that Captain Britain is a character that was published in Britain for a while. Uh, actually, Alan Moore had a great run on Captain Britain uh, in, uh, in the UK. But eventually, Captain Britain came over to the US, and this here is the first publication in which we see Captain Britain on US soil with our favorite web slinger from the friendly neighborhood. Flash number 323. This is a classic story that features Flash versus Professor Zoom. I actually have not personally read this book, uh, but a lot of forums uh, that I've been reading have, have mentioned this book. I'm actually not the biggest Flash fan. I think the extent of my uh, Flash knowledge is the New 52 Flash, which is actually pretty good, but I think I only stuck with that for uh, 10 issues or so. But uh, for those of you that are huge Flash fans, or for those of you that are really looking to bolster your, your collection with uh, some significant issues, this is definitely one to add to your collection for hopefully under $50. The next book on our list is one that definitely needs no introduction. It is a key issue that people have been talking about probably since it came out, and that is Ultimate Spider-Man number one. And this is uh, a relatively new comic. It came out in 2009. Uh, this is uh, this is just a, a great, great story. Uh, it's work by, uh, written by Brian Michael Bendis. Venom, Sinner Takes All, number three. This is the first appearance of a She-Venom. And wow, is this ever a cool cover. I actually went to go read this uh, issue online. Uh, it's really cool. I, I'm actually a huge uh, Venom fan. Uh, anything Venom, I, I, I usually like to uh, to pick up. Uh, but this one here, I didn't even know that uh, this particular title even existed until I was researching this video. So when I discovered it, I had to go and check it out. Definitely one that is worth to add to your collection. Carnage. Mind Bomb number one. This tells a partial origin of Carnage and Cassius, Cassius Clay, Cletus Cassidy. <laughs> I don't know why I said Cassius Clay. Carnage Mind Bomb number one. This features a partial origin story of Cletus Cassidy and Carnage. And it is also the first solo title issue. This is an essential one for all of you Carnage fans out there. Definitely worth to add to the collection, especially with all the hype around Carnage. Now, Carnage is a character that's always been a hyped about character uh, just because he was so popular and red hot since the 90s. But he's especially uh, popular at this time because Carnage is making an appearance in the next Venom movie with Woody Harrelson playing Carnage. Beautiful choice for an actor to play Carnage. That's just my opinion. You don't want to dish out the cash for Marvel Spotlight number five which is the first appearance of Ghost Rider. You don't want to dish out the cash for Ghost Rider number one. So the next best thing is to dish out the cash for Marvel Spotlight number seven, which is the third appearance of Ghost Rider and Johnny Blaze. Cool book, cool cover. 
and uh, definitely one that is significant to the history of the Ghost Rider character. Batman Damned, number one. This is another relatively new book. Uh, I remember when this came out, actually, people just went nuts over it. I, I decided to wait just for the trade to come, come out, and the trade has uh, come out, and I definitely recommend picking up the trade because uh, the story of Batman Damned is just so, so good. But uh, the significance of this issue here is uh, DC Comics now has a, uh, a different label called the Black Label of uh, DC Comics. And these are comics that are um, maybe a little bit more for adult readers or, or mature readers. This issue here was the first book to be released under the Black Label imprint. And it's also a very controversial issue. I won't get into why it was controversial. Those of you who have read it will know why it's controversial, but just know that those two things there, the fact that you, it's a controversial issue in the first Black Label, uh, make it a significant book and definitely worth it to add to your collection. Reader's pick for this issue, of course, is the Batman Damned trade paperback, which I cannot underscore how amazing this story is Pick up the trade paperback today. The link is in the description. Solson Christmas Special, number one, featuring Samurai Santa on the cover. And you're probably all wondering, why the heck is this book on the list? Well, for those of you that are not aware of it, this book here actually features the first interior art ever done in a comic book by Jim Lee. So definitely a, a milestone comic right here. Really kind of cool, and I really think it'd be cool to have this book in your collection. I personally do not have it, uh, but it definitely is worth it to have it. Amazing Fantasy 15. <laughs> no, not that Amazing Fantasy 15. I, th I think I just heard a bunch of you having heart attacks out there that I would put Amazing Fantasy 15 on a $50 comic list. No, but it's not that Amazing Fantasy 15. It is this Amazing Fantasy 15, which features the first appearance of Amadeus Cho, who is a Korean American that uh, ultimately ends up becoming a Hulk. X-Men number 142. This is the second issue in the famous, famous X-Men story, Days of Future Past. Uh, if you haven't read Days of Future Past, it's a pretty good story. Definitely recommend picking it up and it is probably listed on lists all over the internet as one of the best X, Uncanny X-Men stories ever written. Work by uh, Chris Claremont and John Byrne. Uh, definitely essential for any X-Men fan and definitely essential for any comic book collector. Definitely uh, pick up. Uh, d recommend picking up the issue that precedes this one here, which is, of course, Uncanny X-Men number 141. But this book here will be uh, quite a bit more expensive than uh, 142 because the cover is a, uh, it's a, it's an iconic legendary cover and of course it is the first issue in the days of future past storyline if you are looking to just read the story which again i highly recommend uh the reader's pick for this book would be the days of future past trade paperback again the link is in the description if you're looking to pick up that book amazing spider-man annual number 16 this is the first appearance of monica rambeau and uh, she is the character that becomes Photon and eventually the Spectrum. Omega Men, number three. This is the first appearance of Lobo. And this book is getting a little bit of attention uh, nowadays just because uh, there have been rumors, although not confirmed, but there are rumors out there that Lobo might be making some sort of uh, TV appearance uh, at some point in the near future. Incredible Hulk, number 168 with this awesome cover. I actually have this book. Uh, it's really great. And this is the first appearance of Harpy. Uh, and if you don't know who Harpy is, uh, she's just a gamma irradiated uh, Betty Ross. A really cool issue. Definitely worth to add to the collection. You should be able to pick up this book for under $50. I remember when I picked it up, I picked it up real cheap, but I've had it for, for many years now. But uh, I, I definitely highly suggest picking it up. Batman, The Killing Joke, number one. This is another one of those books that I would call a sacred text for Batman fans and uh, is also probably one of the most important comic book stories ever written. 
extraordinary story, beautifully done, amazing art, uh, and beautifully written by Alan Moore. Uh, some of the best Joker quotes ever written come from this book here. Um, what's so significant about this besides the fact that it is a great story? Well, this is the story in which uh, Barbara Gordon is shot through the spine by the Joker, uh, is paralyzed from the waist down, and uh, she eventually becomes Oracle. Now, she does not become Oracle in this book, but it is the uh, inciting incident which ultimately leads to her becoming uh, Oracle in the future. Detective Comics number 583. And this here is another book that I wish I had, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, this is the first appearance of Scarface and the Ventriloquist. Uh, the Sc Scarface and Ventriloquist are actually, in my opinion, very underrated Batman villains. I actually love Scarface and Ventriloquist. I think they're really cool. There's always something, there's always been something creepy to me about dummies and dummies like ventriloquist dummies, I don't know. They've always creeped me out. I think it's because I grew up in the 90s and I used to watch the Goosebumps show. And uh, I remember the uh, Night of the Living Dummy episode always freaked the heck out of me. Slappy was like the stuff of my nightmares as a child. So, so that's probably why I like this book so much uh, as an adult. But uh, definitely worth picking up. <laughs> Uncanny X-Men number 131, and there is a heck of a lot going on in this issue. So, it is not only the first appearance of Emma Frost, but it is also the third appearance of Kitty Pride and the second appearance of Dazzler. So, huge, huge milestone in the Uncanny X-Men. Uh, this is another one of those books that likely you might be priced a little higher than, than $50, but uh, you, you probably still probably could find it for under $50. Reader's pick for this book is the Uncanny X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga. You need to read the Dark Phoenix Saga if you've not already done so. It is probably the single most important X-Men story ever written. Of course, this is work by Chris Claremont who had a really one hell of a long run on the Uncanny X-Men and just the X-Men team in in general the link for the reader's pick dark phoenix saga is in the description devil dinosaur number one this is actually jack kirby work and, and this is the first appearance of the devil dinosaur as well as the first appearance of the moon boy here's another book that i really wish i had in my collection this is one that slipped through my fingers uh, a good three four years ago i actually think just interesting fact here this is probably the last book last back issue that i ever tried purchasing on ebay i remember i was you know just doing offers back and forth with this one guy trying to get the i think first five issues of this run uh but you know I, he was just he just wanted a heck of a lot more than i wanted to pay for it so never ended up getting it hopefully i can pick it up one day uh but uh definitely a great great book there is actually a reader's pick for this so if you want to read this amazing Jack Kirby story, uh, you can pick up the Devil Dinosaur trade paperback and of course the link is for you in the description. So that number does it for our video today. Really, really hope that you enjoy it. Are there any other books that are under $50 out there that are key issues that you feel should have been on this list? Please let me know in the comments. I always love hearing from you. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.